All right, welcome to another episode of Take Back My Brain. I am your host, Lori Hammer, and today I have with me Ashley Courtney. Ashley is the owner and founder of Encourage um, Counseling Center in Algona, Iowa, which is where I live. She's also a specialist in EMDR, so we're going to kind of dive into the counseling world today and how that affects our brain and really what is EMDR. But before we dive into that, I want to just welcome Ashley to the podcast. Yeah. Hi, Lori. Thanks for having me. I love having you here. This is great. So I want to know one, how did you get into counseling? Yeah. So I was not, I did not always know I wanted to be a therapist actually. Um, so it kind of, um, became, um, what I did, it, it really is like, I can't imagine not being a therapist now. So it was meant to be, but I had started out um, originally um, in the pre-med field. That's what I went to college for initially. Um, and then really just didn't like much of the stuff I was doing that first year there. So um, it was interesting though, the the one class that I really like fell in love with, uh, it was just like a basic psychology class that year. Mm -hmm. um, and so after that first year, I kind of like, just uh, pivoted a little bit and I, I went to a different school and I started um, taking more psychology and it was within like that second year that I was just like, like, I really am interested in this stuff. Um, I, I quickly like envisioned myself like as like, I wanted to do therapy, like in an office, like in my own place someday. Um, so I really kind of started seeing it then. Um, mm -hmm. and from there on out, it was like, I knew I wanted to do psychology. I want to do grad school and then do like clinical work, like down the I road. Yeah. Yeah. I got my degree in psychology as well. And so I went yeah. from like nursing school to, I wanted to be a mental health, um, you know, nurse. And then I realized like, that's not the route I wanted to go. So then I mm -hmm. thought psychology and I was, I was going to go on the exact same path that you were on. Yep. Then you know, so like cool. the Lord led me into this nutrition path and nutritional yeah. counseling path. And so I'm so glad yeah. I'm on this path too. So I love connecting on this level because all those psych classes were so much fun. They, they were like, I just like gravitated to them. Yeah. yeah. I, st I still love them. So <laughs> I know the brain, how we relate all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff is just so fascinating Amazing. to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I want to dive into EMDR today and because I've not personally experienced that, but I have some clients who are like, you really should, Lori. And I know that you are an expert in that area and we've connected on other levels. So I want you to share what the heck is EMDR and why is it so amazing? Yes. So EMDR is like one of those things I feel like people have heard of it for some reason, or they've heard of somebody else who have done it, but like they'll come in and they'll say, EDMR, or like they've heard of right. it, but they don't really know exactly what it is. Um, so EMDR um, is much easier to say than the long word, which is um, eye movement desensitization um, reprocessing. I have to think through it even as I say it sometimes. Um, so EMDR essentially works with um, our brain um, and our mind and really how, how memories are stor stored in our brain mm -hmm. um, and how the difference between like a really distressing experience memory or trauma memory mm -hmm. um, and like our normal memories, they're, they're stored very different in the brain. Oh, they are. Um, I didn't know that. Yes. So um, for example, in, in the, so to clarify a couple other things too. So um, we talk about the brain and the mind, and a lot of times we think of them as the same right. um, and EMDR, we kind of like, they're different. So the brain is the actual organ. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's the structure of the brain and all of those kind of things are really important in EMDR. Um, and then the mind is more of like that collection of our memories, our beliefs, our, you know, all the things that um, over time we, we kind of become who we are because of all these things we've experienced and collected over time. Right. Right. Um, right. So the, the I like soul, soul of who we are. Yes. We, we would say that when we're body, yes. mind, and soul, right? Yep. It's kind yeah, of like body, mind, spirit, I should say mm -hmm. all the things. And that's one of the reasons, um, like, I feel like even as I do EMDR more and more down the road, why I love it so much is because it's such like, as I see it, like unfold in the processing with clients, like in the office, it is such an organic and like, um, you, you, you can almost just see it, it happen within the client where this old material that's keeping them stuck, the brain okay. and the body were finally able to be like given the driver's seat to come forward in the session and do and bring up what it needed to, to allow it to settle and process and finally like not feel stuck or so triggered by these things um, that have essentially been like this raw nerve just sticking out for so wow. long. 
Right. Um, so that kind of goes back to the memories, what I was talking about a minute ago. So um, a normal memory, a, a not traumatic memory um, is stored very smoothly, right? Like it's it's kind of a stored in a way that it connects to other things in our in our memory and in our brain that connect to it and make sense and maybe remind us of these things. Um, nothing super powerful. Like, I mean, like, like when we remember it, nothing super overwhelming or emotional really with that. Mm -hmm. Um, a trauma memory, um, is not during a distressing moment. Our brain can kind of like, if you want to think of it, like go offline for a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, so the things that are stored during those times, they're not very smooth and they connect like in weird ways to, um, maybe, maybe other things, um, around that time or so that eventually there's, there's certain things that like trigger that, like to come back up. It's, it's essentially like a wound. Like if you want to think of it, that has not been allowed to like healthily heal. Uh -huh. So our brain, our brain also senses that, um, if as a wound and what it does that, that has like prohibit it from experiencing the message from the brain that this this dangerous hurtful situation is now over i'm safe i'm okay it that couldn't happen sure when that trauma memory is stored um that message is not able to get to our brain to let us process and be okay from that like thing. you're stuck in the wrong loop Yes. 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 Kind of like chronic so, pain, like your brain can't stop the pain cycle. So this is yes. an emotional pain cycle that's not been stopped. A hundred percent. Yes. And like with the structure of the brain, like we have all of these um, neural networks in our brain that are sending, you know, the brain cells and the messages all over the place. So the more that a loop is used, mm -hmm. um, like the more cemented, cemented it becomes in our brain. So the more that we have some of these negative or like these threatening feeling loops that are going and going, and right. these can go on for years for people. Yeah. Um, it, it actually becomes so automatic that it's like a subconscious program, just constantly running. Right. right. So when you get people coming in highly, highly anxious or really depressed, or there's these phobias or, or, or it's trauma related things yeah. too. Um, they come in and they might, know the things that are bothering them in current day and that's what they want to focus on and we could sit and talk about those things for years sure. um, but until I bring EMDR into the treatment we're not allowing the brain and the body to bring up what it needs to like when we're when our like conscious self isn't trying to decide what it is that's causing all of this if sure. that makes sense yeah 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 it does so yeah. when you're so how do you how do you bring up what the body needs? Yeah. So that's the part in EMDR that is like, that's really amazing. So we, I really don't know what that will be. The client obviously doesn't know either um, because I tell people this all the time too. If you knew what that was and you knew how, what you needed to do or process, would have done it. You'd be here, right? <laughs> you would have felt better five years ago. Um, so, um, so essentially within EMDR there, there's like eight phases um, that we go through. And the part that you're talking about would be like the fourth phase, like the middle phase. So okay. that's where we get to really the repro the reprocessing. Um, okay. And that's when we utilize something that's really important in, in EMDR. Um, we use something called bilateral stimulation of the brain, which is BLS um, okay. for short. So that's what that means. So when we do that, um, traditionally, like way back when EMDR, which was not, not way back because EMDR is a fairly newer, um, I think in like 1989, 1990, somewhere around then is when EMDR was created. Okay. Um, and so therapists back then, they would, you, you would literally follow their finger. Okay. Um, back and forth. So it uses the eyes and that yeah. bilateral stimulation um, to kind of keep going throughout the session while you're bringing up the distressing material and mm -hmm. thinking about it. So it's kind of like almost forcing your brain to move forward or to go somewhere else with that information rather than kind of here it is, I'm going to freak out and I'm going to stay with it. Right. And then nothing ever moves from that cycle. Um, so when EMDR, when now, so like in my office, we use something called buzzies. Um, and it's just, it's, it's just kind of what it sounds like. There's just these little tiny one in each hand. Um, and they just really almost like if you're holding a phone and it vibrated, cause you got a text message, mm -hmm. it just feels like that. And it just is going back and forth. So okay. one in each hand. Um, and so what that does is we bring up the distressing information. 
So we usually start, we do start with a current um, distressing thing in the, in the client's life. And there are in those earlier phases before four, like one, two, and three, we are working on kind of targeting um, what the target theme might be or negative belief a person might have. And they don't know those things usually until we work through those earlier phases, um, okay. kind of get to that together sure. through some, some steps. But once we've got that targeted thing, a current day thing, or it could be a past memory that we've identified that we're going to start with, that's the most upsetting thing. So we think about that. We start with that. We we turn on the bilateral stimulation, the buzzies, um, and then we allow, like, it's quiet during processing. So uh, the eyes are closed. There's no talking. Um, they just allow whatever comes up to come up. Um, and I always tell them in EMDR, whatever is meant to come up for you will come up for you. Um, and I used to kind of be like, okay, I don't know, like maybe, maybe not. After doing this, um, it's it's pretty incredible. Like it might not, the stuff might not make sense or correlate to the current day stuff, sure. but the emotional response and the feelings that the clients have, they mm -hmm. will tell you, I don't know why that came up, but that was exactly what I needed to, that was how I felt. That's wow. the feelings that I had, you know? Right, um, right. And so that stuff, um, it comes up. And then because the bilateral stimulation is still going, um, it allows the brain and the body to kind of do something with that, that it hadn't before. Yeah. Um, and then that kind of like clears room for newer, more adaptive thoughts, a new, essentially a new neural network can start. Right, right, right. So you're, you're, you're creating those new networks. You're reprogramming what was negative. Sort of like William, um, when, when you're rebuilding the brain, like I do with amino acid therapy, we're literally yes. building new pathways so that your brain knows, Hey, it's okay. I can make this pathway again. And then that actually makes it easier to process, you know, yes. the stuff that you're talking about. So those two components yes. together work beautifully. Absolutely. Yeah. And one thing I, I forgot to mention that will kind of help make sense of that too, is so in those first couple, the, the phases before we get to actual processing, um, we do, we do identify like the negative belief that uh -huh. we might be holding about right. those distressing things. Um, so that might be something um, really common, like I'm not good enough or mm -hmm. um, I'm not safe or what there's lots of them or they're very specific and unique to the person. It's kind of whatever we end up coming to. Um, mm -hmm. But then there's also a part where we identify like, what is the positive, what is the way you wish you felt in those moments instead? Right. Um, and so, and then after we, after we do some of that processing of those negative with the bilateral stimulation, we also do, we, we try to bring in that positive belief and start to create that and strengthen that in there as well. well that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah. you said there's eight phases. So what's phase one? So phase one, and I did write these down because I knew you were going to ask me that. Yeah. So phase one, um, this is just kind of your your basic like information gathering. So okay. when you get with somebody, you got to learn a little about their history, um, gather all that stuff, um, finding out if EMDR is like right for you, um, those kind of things. It's kind of like that. Yeah. Um, so that's phase one, pretty basic stuff. Um, phase two is when we really start to educate and start to kind of get prepared to move into EMDR. Okay. Um, maybe explaining a little bit more, sometimes all the, like the BLS and the neural networks, like that's a lot of words and talk. And right. sometimes people are like, I just want to feel better. So yeah. we try to give them what they need to know and then move into that. We also, during that, that kind of preparation second phase, we want to really make sure that people are going to feel grounded or feel like if they, if we do focus on some distressing stuff, because we do an EMDR, um, that they are able to feel like they know some things to do to help their nervous system and their brain right. calm down again too, and, and reground. So right. there are some specific EMDR grounding skills, um, just things like that, that we might spend a few sessions working on strengthening, practicing before we get closer to that processing in four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sense. Um, and then the third one, so that's the one where we talked about, um, that's when we kind of take a look at, okay, big picture, what are like all the things in your life that are distressing to you? That's the way that I do this step. Yeah. And so kind of, we do this thing where we target map on a piece of paper, all those things. Okay. And then we kind of, we kind of, um, eventually we end up with like what we call like little groups or little clusters out of them. Mm -hmm. And then we prioritize from most distressing to least. Okay. And so 
So we're starting to go from a big picture of all the things and we're kind of trying to narrow it down to where are we going to go in EMDR? Okay. Um, so once we get the primary cluster, the most distressing, um, that's when we start, we say, okay, all these other things are, are also distressing, but we are focusing on this one moving forward. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes the cool thing with EMDR is once you um, are able to resolve some of those more distressing things, yeah. the bottom things become less upsetting as well. So right. that's kind of why, yes, it's like a bungee cord and anything on that theme is going to be healed yeah. um, as you process the bigger things on there. It's pretty amazing. So, right. um, so we get, once we get that cluster, that's where we identify. So when you're looking at these really upsetting things, I want you to feel that in your body. You know, we really get like, like really noticing where, where do I feel in that? And then we say, what is the belief you have about yourself as you feel that way? That's how we start getting to that negative core belief mm -hmm. that we're going to use. Um, and then we also do from one to 10, how much, how much does that, how bad does that feel? 10 being the worst one mm -hmm. being not at all. If you are right on the right negative belief that a person has, they are sobbing and they are like, it's a 10, mm. you know, mm -hmm. they physically feel that so much. Um, and so sometimes you might get somebody who we end up with one and it's like, oh, it's kind of a three, you know, it's not bothering me that much. And it's like, okay, let's go back. We need to, we got to find a, there's a different one in there somewhere. Right. So right. we keep working, but usually it's, it's pretty spot on. Um, then we also connect memories to that belief. So mm -hmm. a current, like current day kind of memory, tell me um, some past things and we go as, as far back as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, so we call that the farthest back one is like the touchstone memory. Um, those are usually, um, those are ones that are used a lot in processing. It's mm -hmm. either the farthest back or the other one that's more distressing than that to you. Oh, okay in this list. Um, right. so it could be the current, it could be a past one. Um, it, and then it also could be a future one mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you're afraid of, or that this could make you feel like in the future. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And then just like that, we do the, and then, like I said, how do you wish you felt instead? And mm -hmm. then they identify that and we still connect some past and current memories and stuff there too. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That sounds, yeah. sounds amazing. And when, when I'm thinking that, you know, um, even from like a biblical perspective, you know, talking about the things that initially, you know, dysregulated that neural pathway, right? And yes. so sometimes we're, we're not aware of it, or it was so traumatic that we just don't think about it, or it just yes. was so common, we didn't think that it was such a negative pattern that we created. Right. Right? And right. so, you know, as a man thinks, it tells us in Proverbs, as a man thinks, so is he. So if you don't know how to rewire that neural pathway, I can see yeah. where this would be really helpful, right? So if we grew up, yes. thinking we're just not enough. And then everything we're doing, we're like, why isn't anything going right in my life? Why can't I get past this one spot? Well, if you yes. never think you're enough, then you're always going to be stuck in that yes. one spot. So we do have to reprogram that. And this sounds like something that can really um, help with that. Yes. It, it It's quite amazing because it's like, you know, you and I have talked in other times about how like truly if you give the body and, and the brain and the mind and, and all of that, the soul, like if you give that what it needs um, mm -hmm. and allow it to do what it needs, um, it does that. Um, and EMDR is, it's, it's just, it's the most effective therapy that I've used with people. I'm the most passionate about that one. Um, and it, I can see that happen in those sessions. And, and it's, I have clients that are like, I think that's magic <laughs> what you just did. And it's like, yeah, and I've heard that from people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so it's, it's powerful. It's really powerful. Um, and it's funny because it's not really me or the person um, doing a lot. I mean, obviously your EMDR therapist, you need to feel safe with, they need to guide you through that. So they need to know what they're doing. Um, but you're just allowing that stuff to be, to come up and, mm -hmm. and, you know, witness it and be yeah. present with it. Yeah. Um, and let it be. And to know yeah. it's not defining you. No. Yeah. Cause that you're, whatever happened to you does not define you. You are a creation mm -hmm. of the most high God and he created you to be beautiful and amazing. He has a beautiful plan mm -hmm. for your life. And so that yes. memory, you know, yeah. like how we were just saying, I always tell my clients, we have to remove the interference, right. And yes. then give the body what it needs yep. and it will heal. Right. Yes. And so sometimes we're just stuck and we don't know what that interference is. Yes. And so emotionally, there's always an emotional component be behind every single disease, 
whether yes. it's cancer, whether it's autoimmune, whether you have a cold, whether you have something, there's always an emotional root cause there. And yeah. so I think we often forget that, or we get so caught up in like, we have to talk through all of this that yes. we, you know, forget that it might not be that difficult. It doesn't have right. to be that difficult. Um, right. So and, I, I and love, yeah, I love coming at it from this point of view, because I'm always like, people come to me like, okay, you forgot the physical piece, right? And so yeah. sometimes we're focused so much on the physical piece that we forget the emotional cause of yeah. it. And that still doesn't have to be as complicated as we make it for sure. Because people Absolutely. are like, I don't want to talk through all the trauma that I had. And no. you're, you don't have to. Or I'll have a lot of people who say, I, I've done therapy. I've done all the things. I've talked with people about this. And the it's just amazing because EMDR also, you don't have to explain to me. You don't have to share with me in detail anything about any trauma. We're right. just letting the body beautiful. do what it never had the chance to do, what it needed to, when it needed to. And it's been right. stuck. Like that injury has been there ever since, right? Mm -hmm. um, and once that can be healed, um, it's so powerful because then your brain and your body comes up with the things that you now want. It's like, they're so much more confident in their decisions. And like, it just, the, the adaptive information that comes up from their own selves, yeah. it's not me telling them where to go with this thing. They've never been able to be unstuck with before all of right. a sudden they can, they just can. Right. Um, and it's funny because EMDR, it, there's not a lot of like, stuff out there to like exactly pinpoint what it is that changes or what happens, but mm -hmm. there's lots of data out there that shows like so much effectiveness and like success with the therapy. So it's, it's one of those, it's really hard to explain. Right. Um, and then once you've experienced it though, it's, it's just, it's, it's so powerful. Right. So yeah. how would this be different than say like limbic retraining or is this sort of a piece of limbic retraining? So I'm not familiar with Limbic okay. retraining. Okay. So then, then we won't talk about that. Okay. So sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you were or not. No. Um, so what would be the negatives of EMDR? Is there anything negative about it? Yeah. So sometimes, so people will get really scared about, is this like, am I being hypnotized or right. um, am it's like, um, am I going to have like all these repressed memories, things I don't even know that were there come up or, um, and that doesn't happen. Um, it takes the stuff that you've already been struggling with mm -hmm. and you feel that, um, but it, you might pull up things that you, that during EMDR, it's like, I don't know why this memory came up because mm -hmm. I've been, this is my problem, but I, but the brain and body always knows it brings the things that you need up to right deal with that, like kind of those core things, the, mm -hmm. the cause, the causes of those things, um, in some way. Um, so I guess in negatives, um, there's not really any people might be really tired after their sessions because the brain is working like really hard the whole time. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a lot of, a lot of like connecting and realization moments. Um, so there's kind of a lot of like, I did that really just like, and so that reminds me of one thing. So oftentimes we, when we take that, the subjective units of distress, the SUD score in the beginning, it's usually a 10, nine, eight, a very high distress number. It is not unusual at the end of a 45 to 60 minute session, focusing on that same upsetting thing that they're at a two okay, or like a zero. Yeah. Um, so by the time we're done, it's mm -hmm. more of like, a, I don't think that it's, that I've got, I've gotten better. I'm at a two. I don't really know why. And right. then they leave and the numbers usually don't rise back up. Okay. Even in future sessions. Um, they don't always fall that fast, but most of the time they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sessions don't ever end, um, until the person is calm. Um, again, initial parts of sessions, you're feeling the stuff, but it's stuff you're already feeling and struggling with. Okay. Um, so then it kind of like comes back down. So yeah tired, um, kind of feeling like you just slept for a long time. So you're a little bit out of it, um, feeling, but like nothing, nothing really negative comes out of EMDR. You don't, you don't get anything new that you weren't already having. Right. Can you give us some examples? Like give us like a, mm -hmm. a, a case example or something. Yeah. Let me think. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of, 
I have lots and lots of them. Um, and one, I'm just, I should also say, um, I also, EMDR can be done with anybody. Um, so I do EMDR with kids too. Um, okay. and we, I actually, um, combine sand tray work and EMDR. No, um, no. and so what's really amazing is, um, and so in situations like that, we'll put the buzzies in like the sides of kids shoes. So there's one oh, on each side. Yeah. And so they can be busy with their hands and playing. Um, and some of the stuff that come that they'll put into a tray is just I mean there's so many metaphorical things that are in there yeah for their it's a mirror of themselves in their life the tray uh -huh. um they do say that the tray is like a mirror of our mind so like you can't not put what's going on in the tray uh -huh. um, and then when you combine that with EMDR um some of the things that start compared to where we end at in terms of here's this thing I don't know what to do with to here's what I'm going to do and how it's going to be okay Right. Okay. In 45 to 60 minutes and they go do it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing. Um, so I am, I am really trying to think of one now that I'm on the spot, I'm having hard. I know. Time. Sorry. Um, no, that's okay. Um, so I've had, um, for example, this kind of a generalish one, but I've had a lot of people with like panic attack stuff, right? Okay. Yep. So um, we'll have some panic attack situations, maybe a recent panic attack happens. So we might use that as the target that we're focusing on. Um, and it starts out and they have all the physical sensations and we're checking in through those processings throughout that time. Mm -hmm. And um, for example, um, I had one gentleman that I was working with and he had panic attacks of being in front of other people passing out. Like he was really scared that that would happen. Right. So yeah. That's what we're focusing on. However, by the end of the session, um, he went through, then he started during processing. He was more seeing himself um, in these social situations, but his friends were with him. Okay. And so they were fine. And, and he was feeling okay again. Like, so he was kind of envisioning different things yeah. by the end of that session. He actually was like, he had the sense that his mom who had recently passed was coming, was like talking to him and saying like, you're okay. And he was sobbing. And he said, that is something that I've always, always, always wanted since my mom's been gone. And he's like, I know he's like, I, I know, or I can't know if that really was my mom just right now, you know? And he yeah. said, but I know that what I, what I felt is what I was needing so bad for so long. Right. He wanted to allow himself to, to hear that. Yes. And, yeah. um, that, and, and I mean, he hasn't had a panic attack since then. Wow. Um, we've worked on other things, mm -hmm. um, and things like that. And so, um, is a lot of panic attack situations, but like that example was like how EMDR can go to like a whole different place that you're not connecting with the current problem, right? but there's something inside that was hurting or in need that wasn't there. And the body can kind of just do something with it. Right. Um, yeah. 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 Can you work with people virtually online? Yes. Yes. Okay. And I had reservations about that um with EMDR until COVID happened and we had to right. um, it's amazing what now, you can do online now isn't it I, yes I I honestly don't think I would have like encouraged it as much as in person and I have a handful of clients that only do EMDR um, via telehealth because they're far away yeah. um and they have just as amazing like experiences with it so, so do you like send them little buzzers or what do you do Oh yeah. Um, good question. So there is kind of like a platform, um, that we can use where okay. they will watch like a, a large dot that just goes across their screen. Oh, so uh -huh. they have to have at least a, like a laptop or a computer. It can't be a phone. Like it has to be a wider screen. Um, but I'm controlling that on my end. And then all they see is that dot on their end during the processing. Okay. Well, that's yeah. pretty cool. So yeah. If anybody's interested in connecting with Ashley and you're not in the Algona, Iowa area, which most of you probably aren't going to be, um, <laughs> yeah. um, information is going to be down in the show notes where you can connect with her for sure. I love this. This is a great conversation. What is one other thing that you would like our audience to know about EMDR or just, you know, counseling in general? Yeah. Um, I think that everybody needs to have a space for yourself to be quiet and just be present with your ourselves, our mm -hmm. inner selves, our thoughts, our feelings, problems, all the things. Um, and it's pretty amazing once you give yourself that space. And especially if it's in a safe place, like if, if it is in a therapist office, like you have that trained person that can kind of help you um hear what you're what you know you need and what you're saying and help guide you to that place. Um 
to truly to be your most like well and authentic self. Um, and when we're stuck with something or there's really big emotional things going on for us, um, mm -hmm. I, I a hundred percent encourage EMDR, um, because it, it does, it gives us that avenue that we just don't have, um, otherwise. Right. Right. And to know that it doesn't have to be, you know, years and years and years of therapy no. to no. move on no. your life. Right. I think people yeah. get afraid of that. Um, they're like, I don't want to talk through all this stuff again. I want to just keep moving forward, which that's what I teach my clients to do. Right. And to speak yeah. life, life and death is in the power of the tongue. It tells us that in second Timothy, you mm -hmm. know, to keep moving forward, to go and take that victory because the Lord has already gone before us. Mm -hmm. And so there's things that, you know, um, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, right? Everything is really in the spiritual realm. And right. so I I feel like what you're saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that it's allowing what's already in us to mm -hmm. like the Holy Spirit, if you want, if, you know, um, I know everybody listening is not a believer, but that's what I believe that the Holy Spirit is bringing forth something that just needs to be let go because that's hindering our relationship with us and the Lord and for what he has planned for us. Would you say that? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I love it. This is such a great conversation and all of her information, Ashley's information will be in the show notes and we'll have to have another conversation because I, I have absolutely. More but, yeah. Uh, this is great. Thank you all for listening. Make sure you like subscribe and share and see you in the next episode. Thanks, Ashley. Yep. Thank you.